tummy that was done to this patient is it clear if there's any gastrectomy or gastric cancer affecting the the cells involved with the production of the uh, of the, uh, the of the the intrinsic factor you are going to have um, a malabsorption of vitamin b12 resulting to megaloblastic anemia or pernicious anemia now if you have a terminal elitis mostly as a result of tb you can have a terminal elitis like a tb elitis you are going to have also a disorder with the reabsorption of iron of vitamin b12 and you have also a problem with storage of vitamin b12 is it like the level of the of the liver now the next point now is for non-megaloblastic anemia. In case of non-megaloblastic anemia, it's not going to associate with vitamin B12. And also I've forgotten to say that in also in megaloblastic anemia, we can have vitamin B9 and B12 deficiency as a result of reactive proliferation. Is it clear? There's a reactive proliferation. Let's say that the patient has hemolysis. Hemolysis, that is the breakdown of red blood cell. In hemolysis, you're going to have reactive proliferation. Is it clear? Why? We need to know that this is what occurs in patients that are sickle cell patients. Is it clear? In sickle cell patients, what happens is that they have, um, the, there's always hemolytic process that is going to take place. Why? Because the red blood cells of the sickle cell patient are Sickle, sickle in shape so the the spleen realize that these cells are abnormal in shape so it's continuously destroying these cells since the spleen and other reticular and reticular system destroy this cell what what is going to happen is that there is going to be a reactive proliferation by the the bone marrow so the bone marrow is going to produce more reticulocytes so the more the reticulocytes are being produced via that reactive proliferation is what is going to be called a consumptive is going to be called a consumptive vitamin B9 and B12 deficiency. B9 and B12 deficiency, particularly vitamin B9. That is why in patients that have sickle cell, they need to be supplemented I, um, um, folic acid every day. But there is no need to supplement iron. Why? Because when there is hemolysis, there is no loss of iron. The iron that is in the body is restored. Is it clear? But when there is hemolysis, there is going to be increased proliferation for the production of more reticulocytes, and those more reticulocytes are going to result to a consumptive vitamin B9 and B2 deficiency, which is also going to result to that megaloblastic anemia. So this patient, the patient with sickle cell, can either have anemia of hemolytic disease that is normal, city normochromic, as we're going to see later, or it's going to be megaloblastic. The next element here, we have non-megaloblastic anemia. For non-megaloblastic anemia, <coughs> for also for non-megaloblastic anemia, we have particularly hypo hypo um, thyroidism. We have type hypothyroidism in non-megaloblastic anemia that you can have. You can have in case of alcohol, alcohol consumption. Though alcohol consumption can also result to a vitamin B12 and B9 deficiency resulting to megaloblastic anemia. We have alcohol consumption in non-megaloblastic. The third element in non-megaloblastic now, we have myelodysplastic syndrome. Is it clear? Myelodysplastic syndrome. Though myelodysplastic syndrome can still result to a megaloblastic anemia because of the consumptive, the consumptive vitamin B9, I'm seeing more of the cells are proliferating. Is it clear? A myelodysplastic or a myeloproliferative syndrome. Is it clear? So myelodysplastic or myeloproliferative, where the red blood cells are produced excessively, like in polycythemia vera, or you can have uh, myelodysplastic syndrome with, uh, um, involving to excessive thrombocytosis or even a leukemia. Is it clear? All that is going to result to this type of macrocytic anemia. And we have um, other chronic diseases. Chronic diseases can result to macrocytic anemia. Now, the next one we have is now um, normocytic normochromic anemia. Normocytic normochromic anemia. Now, for normocytic normochromic anemia, generally the etiology for that is a case of sickle. Uh, we have a case of hemolysis. Everything that results to hemolysis is going to cause normocytic normochromic anemia. 
hemolysis causes normalcy, normal common anemia. And to find for all the etiologies of hemolysis, it has been listed under the tutorial of the sickle cell disease. Go under the tutorial of sickle cell disease. You are going to have a well defined for all etiologies of of, um, of hemolysis. The second element for normocytic normochromic anemia is acute hemorrhage, not chronic hemorrhage. It is acute hemorrhage. Is it clear? Acute hemorrhage, why? Because when you have acute hemorrhage, you're just bleeding, you're losing, using blood. And that, that acute bleeding is not going to cause an acute, it's not going to cause iron deficiency anemia. It is when you are bleeding for a long period of time that you have the iron deficiency anemia and you have a presentation of microcytic hypochromic anemia. But by this time, when you bleed acutely, it is not going to be iron deficiency presentation, but it's going to be normocytic normochromic anemia. Is it clear? So those are the two major etiologies. In addition to that, for normocytic normochromic, we have reduced production. This one is increased loss. This is increased loss. We have increased breakdown, increased breakdown of the hemolysis, and we have reduced production. Reduced production when there is low level of erythro protein and erythropoietin is produced by the kidney so in case where the patient has a chronic renal failure it is just going to be typically produced by it's going to produce a picture of normocytic normochromic anemia but here this other chronic disease that produces the uh, macrocytic hyperchromic anemia we have chronic disease like liver cirrhosis heart failure and other chronic disease but the typical chronic disease associated with normocytic normochromic anemia is um, chronic renal failure those are the different elements that you have to put in mind <clears throat> now after that we have also the the next element involved in the red blood cell parameters you have the red blood the red cell, blood cell distribution we is it clear when you have the red blood cell distribution with cv which is increase it means that there is an increase in polychromasia is it clear when there is poly Chromacia means that there is an addition of multiple color. It means that the color can be normocytic in blood. The, 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 the color, it means that there's addition of multiple color. It means that the, the color can be normochromic. It means that the color can be um, hypochromic and the color can be hyperchromic. Is it clear? So it means that when you want to have, when you think of associations of multiple etiologies located into in a normal chromic, hypochromic, or hyperchromic, you can look at the red the red cell distribution with CV or for the polychromasia. It's going to tell you that there's association of multiple etiologies in different parts. Is it clear? Now, when you have red red cell distribution with um, SV, which is elevated, is called anisocytosis. And when you have anisocytosis, you think of different elements. It can either it means that there is multiple, many sizes involved. It means that there is microcytic size involved, microcytic size. There is macrocytic size involved, and there is normocytic size involved. So it means that the etiologies of microcytic, macrocytic, and um, 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 normocytic normo are all involved to cause that anemia in this case where the red cell distribution is elevated. The next point is going to be for the interpretation of the thrombocyte.